You know, some scientists say in the last week an area of Arctic ice the size of Florida melted away. What? Uh, ice the size of Florida that much melted? Well, let's deal in right now Chris Horner. He is the author of Politically Incorrect Guide to Global Warming. And he joins us from Charlottesville, Virginia. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. I saw this story the other day on ABC.com, and let me just read you the, the headline. It says, an area of Arctic sea ice the size of Florida has melted away in just the last six days as melting at the top of the planet continues at a record rate. And uh, here you can see a graphic of the size of Florida and all that ice. Uh, just imagine. Go on. Um, you've looked a lot into this. What's this mean? It means the media still don't have a sense of perspective on this. When they tell you on record, the first question should be, how long is the record? In this case, we've been taking pictures from the sky since 1979. Okay, so the longest uh, on record isn't all that long. Then they talk about the Northwest Passage opening up, and uh, maybe for the first time on record. The record that we've been regularly monitoring that is 1972. We crossed it, Raoul de Amundsen did, a Norwegian in 1905. The Canadians staked out sovereignty there during World War II, right. during the 40s. In other words, what was happening? in the 1970s. It was the coldest decade in the past century, and people were panicked, as you recall, about catastrophic man-made global cooling. Too much ice then was going to kill us all. Now that it's receded, it's going to kill us all. The pattern here is, whatever it is, it's going to kill us all, and we did it. The only variable in the story is, what is it that I've done? Time. All right. So, so Chris, what did, what do you make of this? When, when you watched Al Gore's movie, and you saw that the Earth had a fever, did you uh, blow a gasket? <laughs> Here's the thing. He used his baby has a fever line. Okay. He uses analogies and anecdotes because he can't use facts. Babies have normal temperatures. Planets don't. What is the Earth's normal temperature, Brian? And where are you going to stick the thermometer? It turns out the places we're sticking the <laughs> Don't you dare ask. <laughs> we're sticking the thermometer above barbecue kettles in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. I'm not making this up. That's official U.S. measuring station. Really? Above asphalt on uh, parking lots in Tucson, hot asphalt roofs. It's absurd, and there are scandals. NASA, did you know NASA corrected the record last month without a press release, which is very odd for them, such that the year 1900 was warmer than the year 2000, or 2002, 2003, 2004? What a warming trend. We'd better set policy on the basis of this. Okay, Chris, so what, your point, your original point is that, you know, it seems like we're inundated with all these messages about the Earth is getting hotter, and, and in fact, the temperature is warmer uh, over than it's been in a while. But, uh, you know, a lot of meteorologists just say, the, the Earth is getting warmer, and we don't know if it's man-made or if it is, uh, in fact, just a great big cycle. But you're saying that the, the small print is these records just go back into the 70s in a lot of cases. So is there more melting than there has been in the last 30 years? The answer is yes, but we don't know about before then. Well, a couple of things. First, the Earth, despite these apparent flat Earthers' opinion, is round. That means we have two poles. So let's go to the other end of the Earth to take a look. We have a record, yes, 35 years, ice mass accumulation in the Antarctic, which didn't get the memo. So that's like claiming up north that I checked ice in January, I checked it again in August, and I said at this rate, it'll all be gone by December. No, it won't. And by the way, the atmosphere hasn't warmed since 1998. That's a deeply inconvenient truth. And why haven't we heard about that? It's available online. NASA's got the data. All right. And uh, check out his book. It is absolutely terrific. It's a politically incorrect guide to global warming. Chris, thanks for joining us today from Virginia.